Necessary adjustments to Minnesota's pension plans have failed to become law over the past two years. That combined with market swings and new accounting estimates have produced some provocative headlines. Joining me in the studio to discuss the health of Minnesota's pension plans is the chair of the Legislative Commission on Pensions and Retirement, Senator Julie Rosen. Welcome. Thank you, Shannon. Bloomberg's calculations, which were released in late August, caused a bit of a stir. They indicated that the state funding is at only 53% of its liability, down from 80% the previous year. Did this report alarm you? Well, the report alarmed me. It was a little misleading, too, because they go actually by accounting standards, and we go by actuarial standards. And so it was comparing apples and oranges, and you can't really do that. Uh, we are moving in the right direction with our pension reform. We had a very strong bill last year that was voted off the floor 67 to 0. And I can tell you that is unheard of for a pension reform bill to have uh, that strong of a bipartisan support ongoing. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was uh, unilateral. Every, everyone approved it. And part of that bill uh, was shared responsibility between current employees to fund in and also cutting the cost of living adjustment for the retirees just to kind of balance the needs of the plan. Is this going to be the viable option going forward? Will you continue to work for that kind of solution? Absolutely. And I think what's important here is, and I want to shout a big shout out to the plans and their boards. They came around the table and we worked diligently all last, um, well, starting in November, of course, and um, all the way through session to get a reform package, a pension reform package that the whole legislature could support. So there is shared sacrifice in that pension bill. And we also looked at ongoing reform and really drilled down to what, what the, the plans were providing. And we found some things such as augmentation, which is uh, a 2% automatic increase on the pension after you retire. We didn't know about that. So there was some adjustments on some early, some other reform packages that the plans agreed to. It's very important to have everybody at the table working on these reforms. This wasn't something that the commission just developed and we hammered the pensions to accept. They were there, they accepted it, maybe begrudgingly some of these, but it is shared sacrifice. So pension bills have been vetoed for the last two years. Uh, last year, because uh, the bill was linked to a controversial labor provision. Will it be a priority this year? Is time running out to get these changes in place for the future? Well, I, I hate to say that the time is running out, but it's extremely important to get these changes in place. We did have a return of investment on 15.1% this year. So it's increasing, this, the, the funds are a little more stable, but that doesn't mean we're going to backpedal on the reforms that we already put in place or that we're instigating and that we already got agreement on and that the legislature voted on. If there's any changes to the reform bill, we could start losing some, some votes, and that's critical. So it's extremely important to get these reforms in place and stabilize these funds to at least 90%, and that's the goal. 90% is the goal in terms of ongoing 100% is the goal, right. but we but would love 90 to 90% would for be 90. great. <laughs> um, there was a recent pension commission meeting. What was your takeaway from that? Well, the takeaway on that was basically to, to tee it up, to talk about how the plans were doing, what had been tra transpired, because we put them to work over the summer, too. Um, and we want to see how the boards are feeling and if they were thinking of any adjustments to the reform bill from last year. We also got a, uh, a really good discussion from the SBI director and uh, the 15.1% investment and his overview of that. And we wanted to see how he felt about the, the rate of return, the 7.5% the, the rate of return that we are adamant about. The same right. rate of return. It was at 8.5%, but the, the plan in the future is to adjust it down to an annual return of 7.5%. Exactly. Like that's a little bit safer for the future? Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is the idea, this is, this is kind of a philosophical question, but is the idea of a defined benefit plan archaic and in need of phasing out, or is it important to keep these pension plans in place for the types of workers who receive them? Oh, it's very important to keep these plans in place. That's a commitment we made from the state, and it's a commitment to these workers and their spouses to keep these plans in place. Uh, we have studied this f for many years. As long as, as I've been on it, it's going on nine years, I suppose. 
And we've looked at going through a defined contribution, extremely expensive, billions of dollars. And that's very controversial too, is that accurate? But uh, when you talk to the State Board of Investment, they believe a, st uh, a defined benefit plan is doable as long as there is shared sacrifice. And I think we are working towards that direction in this reform package. So our commitment, my commitment as the Pension Commission Chair is to make sure that we keep these, these funds viable and ongoing and get them fully funded as, as much as possible. Now, before we started taping, you talked about balancing so many of these interests and how it's really like a puzzle. With this wave of baby boom retirements and then the generations that will follow, are you confident that this, is, this can be figured out? Yes, I am confident. And we have an extremely good pension commission. Uh, it's very exciting. Once you get the, the, the mechanics of pensions, it's extremely, uh, I love it. <laughs> and, it's, uh, and you have to be very careful how you handle pension, um, these, these benefits and the plans. And you can't over, over um, prescribe or over give too many benefits. So it's a moving puzzle but you have to keep it very, very simple too. So ongoing, I think we can. We had the money last year to make sure that we could get at least MSRS, PARA, and St. Paul teachers to that 90% funded. Uh, TRA was, um, we were working and with them. the teachers retirement. Right, the teachers, and we're working with them, and we, uh, I think we have them convinced to go to the same rate of return of 7.5 and not go back up to their 8.0 that they wanted to go along with the other plans, and um, we, we're going to work very hard this year to get it done. There is a strong appetite, at least in the Senate, to make sure that we get this pension bill done. Is it important to you that this pension bill be done cleanly so that it can have that unilateral support again? Absolutely. Um, I was, I was, I, I'll be honest, I was disappointed that the pension bill and the preemption bill uh, combined was the only bill that was vetoed by the governor. And the year before, um, we're not quite sure why he vetoed the, the pension bill, except there was some uh, disagreement from, I think, the teachers, the TRA. And this is good, it's gonna be three years ongoing, and there are individual pension problems that, for individuals that ha are getting some readjustment. We need to get a pension bill signed by the governor, and this is the year to do it. And we are starting early, we have the commitment, um, I feel like we've got the, the money, at least for the, the three funds, squirreled away, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll continue to work with uh, the Teachers Retirement Association. Senator Rosen, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you. Well, thank you, Shannon. It's really good to be here, finally. <laughs>